TBOI. Hello YouTube, I'm back from uh, being away. I'm back from the cruise that I went on with my family. I gotta say, um, I don't want to insult Alaska, but I thought that people from Texas were annoying when talking about the size of their state. Holy cow. Got on a... Oh, I, I've closed Isaac somehow. It's back. Got on a tour in Alaska. They said, hey, anybody from Texas on the, on the tour today? 175 people put up their hands and threw up the Texas Longhorns uh, sign and said, hook them. Uh, and they were easy to spot because they were all wearing University of Texas football gear or U University of Texas A&M football gear every single day. I don't understand uh, th that I've never been on a cruise before, but apparently when you go on a cruise you, if, that's seven days long, you pack your seven best college football pieces of merchandise, and it, especially... If you have any sweatshirts that tell you who won a Super Bowl in the last 10 years, I have saw so many Buccaneers hoodies, so many Baltimore... I don't think the Ravens haven't won a Super Bowl in like 10 years. I was seeing tons of them. It was, it was crazy. I don't really know what was going on. Anyway, um, they said, who here is from Texas? A thousand people put up their hands. And then they, uh, the Alaskan tour guide said, Hey, Texas, you guys have a cute state. If you put Texas inside of Alaska, I w it wouldn't even touch the sides or something like that. And then I was like, that's funny. I like to see Texas get owned a little bit. But then we were walking through like all these tourist trap areas of the town. They've all got shirts that are like, you know, it shows a map of Alaska and then it has like Texas inside of Alaska. And it's like, hey, Texas nice state you got there and i'm like holy cow it's just like it was it, it's like the only thing they talked about apart from you know how beautiful like the landscape was and the mountains and, and the wildlife and stuff like that they were like just check out how big our state is like for example did you know that um by a, first off even though the crews left from vancouver they never asked if anybody was from canada and everybody on the cruise, as soon as we d departed from Canada, from Vancouver, they were all talking shit. They were in like Park City, Colorado. They were like, I was downtown and I saw a guy uh, sleeping in a sleeping bag on the sidewalk. That's crazy. I was scared. And I'm like, listen, you th you're, you're American. You're scared of a guy that's asleep on the sidewalk? We're, we're still in city limits here. At least wait till we cross like the the Bering Strait or something like that until you start talking shit about... They didn't think anybody on the cruise was from the place where the cruise left. Anyway, I, I forgot what I was talking about. Alaska. Let's, let's get started here. <laughs> I gotta run the casino. I don't... This... My muscle memory's all gone. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I didn't... Someone said, did you see the Elon Musk photo? I did not see the Elon Musk photo, but I did see his tweet that said, haven't had sex in so long. And then somebody replied and said, even when you were on vacation, and he replied, nope. And I'm like, this is a 51, it's the richest man in the world. He's 51 years old and he has 12 kids and he's tweeting. He's, he, I mean, he's not even horny on Maine. He's just like kind of sad on Maine. <laughs> it's so bad. I did. I also saw the guy who said, uh, I'm not gay, but I would suck you off just to make you feel better. And then the, uh, there were people in the replies to that that were like, you'd really suck off this guy just to make him feel better? And he's like, yeah, is that weird? I just like helping people. I was like, whoa, it's all right. Anyway, it's, it's an all-time great post. I don't even want to talk about the fact that his name was like, his username dot Shiba Inu dot like seven other forms of cryptocurrency I've never heard of in my life. But anyway, um, okay, will... NL win this one. Sorry on YouTube if you're here just for the Isaac. I literally type yes, no in one box. I'll give you two minutes. There might be some arbitrage on this one because like I haven't played in a bit, man. Like I'm, I might be kind of ass. I don't know. Or maybe I'll get like knives right away. You never know. I also, I don't, I don't have anything rude to say about Alaska because I feel like we, we went to three cities in Alaska, right? One of them was Skagway, Alaska. It's literally just like a pioneer village. All they have are t-shirt stores that sell the same like 
eight t-shirts that are all, and you can buy these in Canada too. This is not just a, a, a US thing, but they'll have like a picture of a moose on them and it'll say like, I moose be dreaming cause I'm in Alaska. Or they'll have a picture of a bear and it'll be like, um, I'm barely awake right now or something like that. Like my, my wife got me uh, a pair of socks. I, I actually asked her to get me these socks cause I, I just thought they were funny. It's a pair of socks that's, it, it's like the way that a boomer texts, like every half sentence is broken up by a picture or an emoji. It was like, someone I love very much, heart, uh, went to Alaska, orca emoji, and bought me a uh, narwhal emoji, these socks, star emoji. And I was like, let's go. Though I, I was wearing those, I'm gonna wear those tomorrow, but I'm not, you're never gonna see them. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear them with shorts and I'm gonna pull them up real high. We were in, so Skagway, Alaska has a population of 870 people, and I'm pretty sure the ship we were on had like 4,500. So I just want to apologize to, the, if anything, I want to apologize to the city of Skagway, because I'm sure that if you work in the tourism industry, it's like one of those things that's like a necessary evil. Like they were like, we love when the tourists come to town, and I'm like, I bet you do and you don't. Because there was literally, like, th this was a town where there was, like, a... There was a train tour we went on, and at the end of the train tour, the train literally just stops on Main Street and lets 2,000 people off of it. So, like, if you had to get to work or something like that, then, like... I'm sorry, I hope you made it past the train, because there's no way around. The thing is, like, 15 miles long. Like, it's crazy. Okay, hold on, hold on. Skirt. Still got it. <laughs> Still got it than one of these. And all I also want to say, and this is, again, not a knock on Skagway, every single business except for, like, one museum that was, like, not getting a lot of traffic and was like, you know what? It's been it's been a week. It's been a week. I, I thought maybe they'd give us a tears up. Um, well, well, okay, let me out here. I forgot. I can't... I got... My, my brain's not multi-threaded right now. Um, every single business except for one that was like come learn about how many people died during the gold rush was basically just selling the same t-shirts and and uh souvenir goods over and over then we went to juno alaska the capital city and i gotta say juno um sucked and it's not juno's fault juno sucked because it's an actual city where people live and are like doing their jobs and living their lives and buying groceries and stuff like that. It's an actual place where people are, are making an existence for themselves. So as a tourist, we went whale watching, which was really cool. Excuse me. Um, but the city itself, I was like, ooh, you know, concrete buildings. Like, where's where's all the ones that look like it's the damn Wild West and stuff like that? Where, where's the 1,700 jewelry stores on the same block telling me, like, I, I can come in and buy a diamond necklace for $50, even though it doesn't, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever, like, economically speaking? Then we went to Ketchikan, Alaska, and I, it's the city where I had the most fun. It's, um, the salmon capital of the world. I don't want to brag. Did I eat salmon there? I, I ate a little salmon in the vicinity for sure. I also, and, and I, I apologize, this is a bit of a rehearsed joke, but I swear to you this happened. I'm 33 years old, I have uh, gray ear hair, and I got carded buying a six pack of beer in Alaska, which raises a lot of questions about how hard the living situation is in Alaska. Because I don't think I've been carded since I was like 27, 28, and even then I think it was like, a, you know, an act of charity. But this lady, she was like, I'm gonna need to see some ID, and then I was, I, I, this is how Canadian I am, especially when I'm on vacation. I said, I pulled out my ID and I said, I'm sorry I'm from British Columbia. And then she just looked at the ID for like... I don't know, like 30, 45 seconds. And then she said, where's your birth date on this? And embarrassingly, I was like, I don't know. Like I've never had to look at the birth date on my own driver's license. It's never come up. I just, <laughs> like I, I know how old I am. Anyway, she sold it to me, which was nice, but. I do have to say as well, um, I, I didn't think of myself as a, as a cruise sort of guy. 
But I think especially, like, wait, I was talking about it with Kate at breakfast this morning. We had to wake up for breakfast at, like, 5.45 a.m. to disembark from the ship at, like, 8.30 for some reason. But um, they, uh, when, when you're a kid and I think you go on vacation, you're like, oh, we're doing, like, cool stuff. You know, we're going, uh, oh, like, people were going, like, dog sledding. People were going on like a helicopter tour of the of the fjords and stuff like that. As someone who has like a really young baby, it was just really nice to like not have to cook or clean at all. Um, like to the, I, again, I'm not saying like oh it's so impossible to like you know have a young baby, especially just one kid, but like. Every meal, you're like, I gotta cook something for me. I gotta cook something for the baby. I gotta clean my dishes. I gotta clean the baby's dishes. While we're cleaning the baby's dishes, someone's gotta be watching the baby, blah, blah, blah. It was like, some of the stuff we did, like the tours, the train, the whale watching, like that was all cool. But the best part of the cruise, for sure, was people being like, like I, I was almost brought to tears. People were like, let me feed you. I mean, you paid us a, a lot of money, but you know. <laughs> Let me feed you, and then when you're done eating, you don't even have to go to the sink immediately and like rinse the dishes. We'll just take them away, and then we'll we'll bring you more food. Ah! What the hell? It's a it's a damn golden gift. This is the most incredible thing I've ever seen. I don't even know what to say. Holy cow! Yeah, it was, it, honestly, it was really fun. That's, I, I, I thought I would come back and be like, um, you know, I don't really understand, like, the cruise culture. And don't get me wrong, saw a lot of stuff where I was like, I mean, there's just people out there that have, like, no manners, man. I, it, it just cut it, like, literally you'll be in, like, a line of, like, 75 people. And then someone will just walk up to the front of the line and be like, you know, hey, I want that thing. And they're like, yeah, there's a line. And they're like, oh, okay. And then while they, they go back to the line, but like while you're in the line, you can hear people. Like they always think they have like the whole, they, they know better than like the people that are staff, how to do everything. Oh, I would never do it like this. This is ridiculous. How come we can't even get our luggage uh, before we go eat lunch? I'm like, cause they're putting 7,500 suitcases onto a boat right now. It's not gonna be back in port for a week. And then they gotta move, they gotta deliver it to 7,500 separate rooms. And if it shows up like uh, a minute late, you're gonna lose your damn. That's why it takes a while, because there's a lot of people on the damn ship. And I, I, hexagonal crank, I don't know if you're here right now. First off, condolences on, um, condolences on the Calgary Flames over the course of the past 10 days, like completely imploding. But you, you got it 100% right. The, the main anecdote, I'm sure my wife is sick of, of hearing about it. The main anecdote I have is that how is it possible that people can be like 75 years old and not know how a buffet works? Like a buffet is like a roundabout. You get in at the entrance, you grab like a tray or a, and a plate, and then you go through the items in order and you go, it, every station is a choice. Do I want this or don't I want this? Do I want this or don't I want this? Like, you just say yes or no to everything. You get a little zoop and then you put it on the plate. So many times you'd be going through the, the buffet and then you would see somebody, they would just grab a plate and then they would perpendicularly intersect the, the buffet line and just take like chicken tenders. And I'm like, you don't understand. You don't just go, I want this thing, I'm gonna block the flow of traffic. You look, it's like merging onto the highway. There will be like a gap between a party. You sidle into the gap. You wait for somebody to put some rice pilaf onto their plate and then you get to the fries and then you get, you, you can't just be like, I, but I just want the fries. I just want the fries. Why would I waste my time going like here? There's, a, there's an order to things. That's what you do. Okay, we've spotted somebody who wears a Super Bowl champion hoodie to the formal dinner on the second day of the cruise. And that's fine, you know, I'm not I'm I'm not that into the dress code or whatever. I'm just saying. We lost soul lived for another floor. Holy cow. I can't believe it. Of course I know him, he's me. It's still pretty good, honestly. 
It's just, how does he have Godhead on floor two? Dude, it's Lost Soul. It's like the best item in the game. It, Dan Psychology is the best item in the game because it can give you the best item in the game. So it's even better than the best item in the game. Isn't it more efficient to not wait? No, it's more efficient for you not to wait. It's less efficient for the 20 people that have been waiting nicely and doing things the right way. That are trying to get to the french fries. Plus, you're not even supposed to be at the french fries. Oh, no. You're 75 years old. I'm supposed to be at the french fries. I got a two-year-old kid, and, like, the only thing she'll eat during the whole cruise is, uh, chocolate chip muffins and french fries. So, like, I got- th th this is, like, basically, like, a medical emergency for me to get to the front. The whole- before we left for the ship, I had her well-trained. I said, what do you want to eat on the ship? She said, fish. I said, that's great. We're gonna eat a lot of fish on the ship. You can have fish every day if you want. First day, I, I read her the dinner menu. I say, what do you want to eat tonight? She says, mini hamburger. I say, okay, well, she didn't say mini hamburger. Like, she didn't read the menu, like she repeated after me. Got her a, a mini hamburger, only ate the french fries. Rest of the cruise, she only ate french fries, chocolate chip muffins, the occasion. She ate a little bit of a corn dog last night. And uh, did I say chocolate chip muffins? Occasionally she would sample a little bit of the the uh, bread service. And she also, she drank probably a liter and a half of chocolate milk a day. And like, that's how you know you're on culinary copium. I was like, well, at least she's drinking a lot of chocolate milk. Like, it could be, <laughs> it could be worse. Uh, is that healthy with all the carbs and whatnot? No, it's probably like the worst engineered diet you could ever imagine, especially for a growing baby. But, you know, she was very overwhelmed by being on the, you know, by being on the cruise and by seeing so many people and, um, you know, and, and this is another thing. I'm not saying this is all Americans, okay? I don't want this to just be like, because not everybody I saw on the cruise was American, I'm sure. Like, not everybody was wearing the college football gear of their alma mater from somewhere between 5 and 45 years ago. But, I don't know what possesses, I guess it's the curse of having a cute baby. But, we would take our baby out for like an hour long walk, uh, just throughout the ship every day so she could get a nap. Even when she was sleeping, and maybe other parents can relate to this, even when she was sleeping, everybody we saw that saw the baby would be like, Y'all got a cute baby! Oh, she's out like a light! And we're like, yeah, she's out like, like, shut the hell up. We gotta, like, she's sleeping. I don't understand, like, I didn't, I don't think I told this anecdote, but I was like, I don't think I own the streets, okay? Like, I, I don't think that it's, uh, my world and everybody else is just living in it, but uh, I was walking my baby for a, a nap. This is like two weeks ago now, and I was just walking like around the park, and then a wedding party drove by. You only get married one to eight times in your life, depending on you know whether you're an actor, right? Sure, why not? Um, I'm not worried about the wedding party making noise. That's a special day. But for absolutely no reason, this dude who was parked on the street next, like directly next to, oh my god, this is good. Directly next to where I was walking the baby in her stroller, was like in his car and just started honking the horn and waving at the wedding party. Like, hey, 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 I see you, I see you, you're having a special day, I see you, I see you. And I was looking at him like, have you lost your mind? Like, how, you're actually like 60 years old. And you're like, I see, I see a special day. I'm gonna make like an insane amount of noise. Anyway. Hey, hey, get out of the car. Get out of the car. Anyway. Um, he's happy and he's honking. He's not happy. This is like when you see, you know, like a car accident and you like rubberneck it, you know? He's, just, it's, he's making it about him by honking his horn. He's making the wedding, it's not like when you're in the limo, you're like, oh good, people are honking for me. When you're in the limo, you're like, okay, now I gotta wave to this asshole who honked. Okay, congrats, like, you you saw our limousine, like, having, this is why I just, uh, 
you know, I just drove the damn Focus home. I didn't even think we owned a car. We probably took a, a taxi home <laughs> from our marriage. Oh, Planetarium? You shouldn't have. Mm, okay, we'll just re-roll that one. Look, not all of my takes are based. Some of them are, are like, completely biased by b having a baby, which is you know, both fair and unfair. I'm not saying you should be quiet in public at all times um, because someone around you might have a baby. All I'm saying is if you see a sleeping baby, like on a cruise ship, maybe don't shout because you're seven daiquiris deep at 10, 15 a.m. Hey, what a cute baby! Neptunus. Sure, why not? I don't know. Ever consider moving to Germany? Honestly, bit of a uh, out of the pocket question, but like I, I have neither a yes or no to that. I wanted to read it, but I, I don't have a yes or no. <laughs> well, magic mush, you shouldn't have. It also didn't do anything for us. You're 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 right, but you know you got to give it a try. Magic Mush did, though. Holy cow. With a golden chest, you shouldn't have. No, I did not watch Hulu's hit show, The Bear, on the cruise. I'll be real with you. Like, five out of seven days, I had no access to data or Wi-Fi. I was thrilled when we got to Ketchikan, Alaska, because I was able to uh, open up Twitter for five seconds to send a tweet that said he is tweeting on vacation. Oh, just a little Mr. Dolly real quick. Have you seen? No, I haven't seen anything. I, I, I've seen in the, in the past week. Well, that's not true. I downloaded a bunch of stuff um, to watch. I really should have downloaded other games because the only game that I had that didn't. I've got so many like offline games, but all of them require like authenticating first to make sure you're not like, I don't know, like cheating, uh, like free hints into the crossword app or something like that. Uh, we're getting a little Lost Soul action here, by the way. But, um, I, so all I could do was this, like, British crossword app, and it was so, like, annoying. Like, the tweet that I sent was actually, like, it's not one-to-one, -one, but it was, like, 0 0.8 to 1. Four across, Lord Beaverbrook's Muse, or the name for the Tesco brand of Bovril. It was, like, sure, why not? Like, I was losing, there, there was one that was like, a vehicle for traveling on snow. So I typed sled. It was like, nah, man. Ridiculous answer. Then it said, uh, then I thought, oh, this is British. So I typed sleigh. S-L-E-I-G-H? No, wrong. Then I said, I don't know what the hell, man. Like, I, do they call them skadoos in England? So I typed skadoo. It was like, we've never heard of that word before in my life. Had to use a hint. It's sledge. Sorry, my mis maybe that's not even a Britishism. The the thing that was like most annoying though was like um excuse me, excuse me. Probably re-roll that. Um the thing that was most annoying though is that like it the whole none of the clues were like unique. They were all like just synonyms. So it would just be like a word, and then you'd be like, okay, what are like the top three synonyms? But this, the synonyms that are popular in England are different than the synonyms that are popular in North America. So it would be like the, the word that you would only use in North America if you wanted to like show people that you did like a semester abroad in London was the actual answer. I'm not, I'm not mad, I'm just like, you know, I wish I downloaded other stuff. But I did watch one episode that came highly recommended from chat of the James A. Caster special from like 2019. And I was like, you know what? I've been kind of sleeping on this guy. This was a, that was a, that was a great set. It was, it, it was nice to watch some stand up comedy that was not just, you know, like a guy, like he was manipulating the form, right? And, I, and I, there's still three more episodes I gotta see. Which I'm eager to see as well. How do you play this game? Like this. Don't spoil the jokes for me, please. I see you typing non-sequitorial punchlines in the chat. 
Now I'm gonna. Well, you know what? I think stand-up comedy might actually be one of those things that's that's. It's better when it's spoiled, because then when you get to hear a punchline for the first time, it's also a callback. You're like, not only is that funny, and I'm hearing it for the first time, but also I remember when I first heard about that. You get a little bit of both. Also, um, the other thing that was cool about being on a cruise and thus not having to do any chores was, like, the reason I didn't watch half of the shit that I downloaded, even though I didn't have any data or Wi-Fi, was because, you know, the baby would fall asleep at, like, 8.30, and then I would be like, what should I do? And then I'd be like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna fucking join her. I'm gonna fall asleep. So I fell falling asleep at 8.30 and waking up at, like, uh, you know, 5.45, like a damn psychopath. But it, honestly, it felt pretty good. I don't even know why I, I just walked in and walked out. I don't even know what I'm thinking. I'm not taking any of those, though. I'll tell you, it's my first day. I can do whatever I please. I'm not taking Tiny Planet. I'll take one of these. Do they have a casino? No, it was a family... It's a family show. There was no casino. But we did cross some cruise ships that had... I could see the slots in their windows. There was no arcade either. But there were some cool stuff, like uh, good restaurants and also a daycare. There was a little section where like only kids can go, but then they have open hours where everybody on the ship can go. So I took, uh, well, we took the baby there during the open hours to see if like she would enjoy it. She did not have a good time, but they had a cruise ship driving simulator, like Microsoft Flight Simulator, but for a cruise ship, I was having a damn blast. I don't want to brag, but I got, on the hardest rank, I got a perfect score navigating my cruise ship through um, icebergs. And the icebergs were mighty close. I wish I knew the name of the captain of the Titanic. I don't want to offend any Titanic enjoyers. Like, people who are into the actual history, not just the movie, of course, but... How did the... How did the Titanic hit the iceberg? Like... Not to be rude, I guess, but like... You're not going that... Like, the ship that we were on had a top speed of like 27 nautical miles per hour. It's like the speed that... Like a, a marathon runner travels for four hours straight. Like, it takes 30 minutes to turn. Can't they just shovel the coal into the engine faster? Whip the wheel around or something? Why? Was it like they saw the iceberg and then they were like, we got to turn, but we don't have time? I think, yeah, I think it was a drunk driving situation. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm, I think there was some criminal negligence there. I'm making it. I'm making it. There was fog. Yeah, that was the... Uh, sometimes you forget you're not, like, in a hotel. You're actually on a boat. Like, the second day we went up for breakfast, we're walking across the deck. Our daughter's having a great time. Ha 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 Like, the 100 decibel foghorn with no warning just comes up. She's, like, running backwards, like, into our legs and screaming. And then the staff comes up to us and is like, you guys might want to get inside. Well, there's inclement weather. The captain has to repeat that every two minutes. Holy cow. Um, excuse me. I don't, captain, I don't know if you know this, but we're on vacation right now. Could you knock that shit off? Every two minutes? Don't you have, like, like radar or something like that? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> Like, planes don't have to do that shit when you're flying through a cloud. You can fly through a cloud for, like, ten hours straight. They're never like, uh... They have... They have... Air traffic control. Do they not have water traffic control or something? I don't get it, man. Small boats might not... Honestly, if you're... Like, kayaking in the Pacific Ocean in the fog... You, you kind of reap what you sow. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you don't want to get freaking swamped by a 90 gigaton cruise ship, then stop trying to interrupt my vacation with these foghorns, okay? It's like, I mean, this thing was not cheap. Oh, I'll fight you. It's 
for the small boats. I, if they were performing an act that has an industrial purpose, then I under... If they're fishermen, I don't want a perfect storm situation. I certainly don't want a, a Captain Phillips situation. I'm not flaming, I'm just saying. You know, honestly, why not, man? Why not? What cruise line was it? I don't want to tell you that because it's private information, but would it um, narrow it down if I said it was playing a part of your world by, uh, you know, from The Little Mermaid 24-7? And my daughter got her picture taken with Spider-Man? <laughs> would that... Uh, maybe you could read between the lines on that one? It was cute. She was, it, We had to get our picture taken with Spider-Man because she kept... Well, and she was like, there were times during the cruise when she's not happy, which is, I think, normal for a, you know, 21 month old baby in a, you know, unfamiliar situation like that. But I, I got to calm her down by like teaching her how to do the Spider-Man impression. So I would go like, what does Spider-Man do? And she'd go, tss, tss. she'd go like that. So then on the last day, they had a little Spider-Man meet and greet. So we, we had her go meet Spider-Man. And then as soon as she saw... The guy's got like... Um, he's Like if you're a, a Disney Cruise like character, you're the master of small talk. You got like... They, they were doing speeches that were like so rehearsed. Hey, nice dress. You know, it was a, a dress like that. My friend Dottie. Yeah, my friend Dottie. You know, she used to live with... I bet you've seen her. You've never seen the... You know, anyway. So they have like all this information, right? that they just rattle off. We go talk to Spider-Man. Spider-Man starts to do his spiel. One second into the spiel, she just goes, psst, Spider-Man. Hits him in the face with his own virtual web shooter. Threw him completely off his game. He was like, uh, <laughs> he was like, whoa, I, um, I see that you're already training. Hey, you guys wanna get your photo taken? I was like, let's go. I don't want to brag as well. I think I, I might be like a character in a few people's cruise ship story like i the baby was not loving the buffet because there's a lot of people and they're not always well mannered so like past the first day i would get on the elevator go up to the buffet grab like all the food for the whole family and then take it down in the elevator so we could eat it in our room okay so like day four i had few hash browns, bunch of bacon, chocolate chip muffins, croissants, Mickey Mouse waffles and stuff like that. Ooh, you shouldn't have. I get in the elevator. Excuse me. Um, goes down one floor. Dad and his family get on. He says, wow, that breakfast looks good. I said, it's for uh, another adult and a baby. He says... No problem. I've had a few breakfasts like that myself, so even if there wasn't a baby, it's okay. I said, that's good, because I made up the stuff about the baby. And then, I swear, I've never, they, they, it's a, like a warm audience, right? Everyone on the cruise is already having fun, so they're ready to laugh. And uh, they, they were cracking up. I'm sure they, they probably told that story again like two times. They're like, remember that guy on the elevator today? Oh, man. And then when uh, we did this, like, photo thing where our baby could get her photo taken with all these, like, Disney princesses. And I was doing... Uh, Kate was in the photo because I was wearing uh, a shirt that said Ketchikan, Salmon Capital of the World because I ran out of laundry. So I didn't want to <laughs> be in the photo. Well, no, she didn't want me to be in the photo because um, she was dressed nicely. Anyway, so I was doing the videography, right? And while I was filming it on Kate's camera, I said, you know, we've been on this cruise for six days, so I'm really hoping she's a bit better behaved in these photos. But enough about my wife. I hope the baby does well, too. And the, the woman who was taking the photos started laughing. And I said, do you like that one? And she said, yeah, that was pretty good. You got a chuckle out of me. I was like, well, what can I say? I, I, gotta, I was kind of on, man. And also, I was blending in with Americans so well. Like one day, this is another a buffet elevator story. It was the first day we were in Alaska. I was on the elevator and then an older guy got in right after me and he said, 
what's the temperature today? They said low 50s, and I said, it's going to get as low as 47. And he went like, wow, that's cold. I was like, I don't know what the fuck 47 means. But he thought I was, even though I wasn't wearing a University of Miami at Ohio uh, sweatshirt, he, he thought I was one of them. He, I'm an honorary American now. Forty-seven is almost freezing. I know I'm familiar with thirty-two. Okay, I, I gotta say I was kind of. I'm not saying I was the star of the cruise, but I was kind of cracking it up. I'm sure the staff probably appreciated that I was like one of the only adults on the ship who wasn't singing every time they recognized the song, which was every three seconds because all of the songs they play are the most recognizable Disney songs of all time. So they're probably like, at least this guy brought some original material. Holy cow. What did the baby think of the drawing dinner? Yo, we got a, a certified Disney uh, cabana vacation member here. So one of the dinners, you draw a self-portrait and then they put it into some kind of scanner and then they show you, they animate it on a big screen in the middle of the, well, on the edges of the restaurant for everybody. It was cool. Uh, how did she like it? She liked it about the same as all the other dinners, which is to say um, she liked it as long as there was like unlimited chocolate milk on the, at the table. Why so many old people? Dude, I, honestly, I'm not knocking the, the old people. I think it's just pleasant. Like, if you're already the kind of person that would, like, go t on a trip and then, like, when you got to the hotel, you would only leave the hotel to, like, do one museum tour and then eat dinner, that's basically what it is. Like, you're... You're just laying in bed for, like, half an hour. Then you go eat, like, some uh, breakfast. Then you go, like... I don't know, uh, watch like a, a 45 minute long family friendly stage show. Then you go eat lunch at a buffet, I might add, at a buffet. And then you like, you know, go take a little 90 minute duck boat tour of Ketchikan, Alaska. Go eat dinner and then go to bed. It's just, it's, it's just eating and, uh, and swaying. I, I saw someone ask, did you get seasick? I, this is me being honest with you, but also hopefully a little funny. I think I might have like nautical blood because I didn't get seasick at all. And most of the time I couldn't even feel the boat swaying, but there were people that were definitely getting nauseous. Kate was telling me like, oh, did you feel that? Did you feel that? And I was like, nah, I'm like, I, if anything, I took a shower when we got home and I was like, oh, I don't know if I feel, I don't know if I got my land legs. I got my sea legs. I don't I don't know if I got my land legs. It I I honestly think to you it might have it might be toe walking. Because like my I stand on the balls of my feet, I think it leaves like more my calves are there to like counterbalance the, the sway. Whereas people who have their heels on the ground, they're like locked in. Anyway. Cruise ships barely move. Oh, I don't know, man. We were pitching like crazy. A couple people went overboard. I'm just kidding. Anyway, let's run one more. I had fun with that one. I'm already getting hoarse. This is what happens like when you don't talk that much for a week. I will also say, let me let me take some water here first. 